Welcome back to Cook It Simple with Eric. Today we are making a chicken macaroni and cheese casserole. This thing is quite amazing. It smells amazing. It tastes amazing. It's something that everybody needs to try. I want to show you this. That is a beautiful casserole. Mm. So I'm going to show you how to make it. So come with me. Let's get started. Oh, and by the way, if you haven't uh, subscribed, go ahead and subscribe. If you like the video, go ahead and like and share it. So I'd appreciate it. So let's get started. So the ingredients that we're going to be using today are, first and foremost, macaroni elbows. I use the Barilla brand. Uh, great pasta. They also have a lot of gluten-free options. So we're going to use the whole box of that. We're going to use, I bought a rotisserie chicken and just chunked it up. Great. It's just the way to go. You just buy it from the store for about eight bucks. Come home, crunch it. Just put it into all the pieces like you want for your, whatever you're using. It's great. We're also using one pound of your Velveeta cheese. I, I did cubes about three quarters of an inch. Maybe half inch. So we have one pound, which is half a block. I also decided to do one cup of mild cheddar, one cup of your Colby Jack cheese. I'm also, I diced up a small onion very finely. We're going to put it in there. You don't have to, but I love onions, so I'm putting it in. We're also using a cream of chicken with herb, and we're also using a cream of mushroom in it, along with two cups of milk, so the wet stuff will mix together before we put it all together. Now, just as a quick note, everything you see here, you can make this gluten-free very easy because they do make your gluten-free soups in the store. And Barilla has great gluten-free products. So, easily made. So the first thing we need to do is grease a 13 by nine casserole dish like this, which I've already done. I did it with uh, butter flavored Crisco. Just lightly grease it. We'll preheat the oven to 350 degrees. We're gonna bake this for about one hour, right around there until the pasta is tender. Um, we're gonna bake it covered with foil. Probably about the last 15 minutes we'll remove the foil. Try to get a little bit of crispiness on the top of it, a little color on it. So let's get started. All right, let's mix the wet ingredients along with the onions first. So we're going to start with the uh, cream of chicken with herb. Just going to put that down in there. These little rubber spatulas work wonders in cans. Next, the cream of mushroom. Get it all in there. All right, and people wonder why I make a mess. All right, now we'll go ahead and put our two cups of milk in. I'm using 2%. Of course, you can use whole milk, skim milk, but I always say the more fat, the better. So, but I drink 2%, so that's what I have on hand. I just use a whisk to get all this mixed together to a smooth consistency right, there you have it and there I go so smooth consistency let's go ahead and get the 6x9 or the sorry the 13x9 casserole dish alright so the first thing we're going to do Throw our cheese in. Like I said, we have one pound of Velveeta, the Velveeta brick. We just used half of that, cubed it up. Just get in there. Now, a little trick to cutting this Velveeta put it in your fridge overnight. Just let it kind of firm up. 
get cold and then cut it with a very sharp knife quickly and you shouldn't have any problems all right so we've got that let's go ahead and put our pasta put the whole box in there just spread it out evenly I did say I was going to do the onions in the wet mix, but I think I can meter, meter them this way a little bit easier. So right, that's probably good right there. All right, let's go ahead and get our chunked up chicken in. Like I said, I did it chunks I like, so you can do chunk sizes you like. Now halfway through, we're going to stir this and kind of mix it up anyway, so it's not like you have to be super duper about it, but I think I'll put, or you know, you don't have to be very picky about it. I know Stuart's wanting some chicken. Hey, Stu. Come here, bud. Get some chicken. There you go. That's a good boy. Here you go. A little more. All right. Um, I always put it all in. So we're gonna do that. Sprinkle some more of this chicken in, or the uh, Colby Jack cheese. Like I said, this is just for a little extra flavor. I had it in the refrigerator, so we might as well use it. Then from here, we'll just put our wet mix of soups in there. And being liquid and getting hot and cheesy, everything's going to kind of level out. It's a handful right now, so. Let's kind of direct it. Let it do its thing. Like I said, halfway through, we will give it a good stir. Everybody get comfortable with each other here and let's put some foil on this thing. Get it in the oven for 60 minutes. Before I put the foil on, I almost forgot. I'm just dash her up with some garlic. And generously pepper it. Because who doesn't love a good pepper? Mm -mm. Do that. And for a little smokiness, we're going to try a little bit of smoked paprika. Never tried it before, but I like to be adventurous and try new things when I'm cooking. There we'll go with that. All right, let's put the fur on. There we go. Get her in the oven for one hour. Excuse me, Stuart. It has been 30 minutes, so we're going to go ahead and remove it. Give it a stir. Check and see what we have going on. It's starting to smell delicious. Well, yeah, we're starting to get some cheese melt going. Oh man, that smells amazing. Oh, that's good. All right, we'll just stir it up a little bit. Cheese, look at that. That cheese is melting beautifully. I think we're on to something. All right, I'm gonna put it in. Oh, there we go. Gosh, that looks so good. All right, let's put it back in for Actually, I'm going to leave the top off of it for now, and I'll keep checking it, but we're going to put it in for 30 more minutes with the foil off. If it starts getting too brown, I'll put the foil back on. Let's do it that way. All right. I tend to change my mind on things as I go along. That's why I don't have any tattoos, because I'm too indecisive. 
it has been one hour. We stirred it halfway through, took the foil off. So it's baked the first half hour with foil, the last half hour without foil. Ooh, man, look at that. That right there is such a beautiful casserole. Well, only one thing left to do. We need to try this because it smells amazing. Well, here comes the moment of truth. Let's cut into our beautiful casserole. See what we've got. This recipe right here would go great with some mashed potatoes on the side, some broccoli on the side, some asparagus, whatever you want. Since I'm only having a little bit because it's almost nine o'clock at night, the rest of it's going to be heated up and I'm going to take it over to some friends tomorrow and we're going to finish it off. So now I checked the pasta when we pulled it out. That's that. Oh, that looks good. Oh, that smells. I don't keep talking about the smell, but it really does. You need to make a candle like that. All right. So as you can see, creamy, cheesy, very hot still. It's been sitting for probably 10 minutes, um, but we're going to try it. So let's give this a try. Can't help but be a noisy eater. It's so good. But now the pasta, as you see, it didn't grow a lot like if you if you boiled it in water. But it's definitely kind of al dente, which is good because with all that cheese, you need something to give a little crunch to. I was going to put the rich crackers on top, but in the end, I decided it's perfect the way it is. Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of Cook It Simple with Eric. Today, making the chicken macaroni and cheese casserole. So it's a great dish. Definitely one that you, that you have to try. It's super simple, delicious. Everybody will love it. I love it. So until next week, thank you so much. And don't forget to please like and subscribe. Bye-bye.